Hey, Denise's Journey here with another silly little video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a candle stove. You don't need too many things for this. You can save things that you already have in your pantry. A pot of meat can, a Vienna sausage can, some candles, or you know when you get to the bottom of the uh, candle jar and it's always got that wax in the bottom you just can't do anything with? Save it, because you can use that candle wax for this project. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what size can that we're going to use. If we use this one, then we need to make sure that our cardboard is that height. So what we're going to do is just come up to here, take our scissors, Make it even with the top. We've marked it. We're going to cut a strip of cardboard. I've got me a strip cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the end. And I'm just going to roll it up. I'm going to keep on rolling it. See? Now for a tuna can, because they're wider, it's going to take a little more to fill that space. So we just keep rolling. Okay, the one strip that I had wasn't big enough, so I added another one to it, and you just keep going in the same direction, and you just keep going and going and going. And if this one isn't quite big enough, then you just grab another piece of cardboard, and you just keep going. You see, it's not going to be quite big enough, so I need another piece of cardboard. Okay, now I believe I have enough cardboard, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in my can. It's nice and pretty tight, but not overly tight, because you want that wax to get down in those little grooves there. You can use the smelly kind like this if you want to, or if you don't want to use that because you're maybe going to use this for hiking or camping, or, you know, a bug out bag, or anything like that where you don't want that smell, you can always just buy uh, beeswax or use unscented candles. If you use an unscented candle, you're going to melt the wax, so you want to take this wick out. Save this wick, because you can use this later in another project. And then all we're going to do is melt the wax. You can either melt it in the microwave very slowly, or you can use a double boiler system which is just putting a pot of hot water on the stove and another pot on top of that just so that it gets that steam from the, the heat from the boiling water below and slowly melts the candle wax. But I'm going to put mine in a microwave safe container that I'm going to throw away. We're going to cut the candles up in smaller pieces. Make sure you use a sharp knife and be very, very careful. Okay, when you melt the wax and you're pouring this, you need to move quickly because the wax will <clears throat> will harden back up pretty quickly. So all you're going to do is take your melted wax that you have and you're going to pour it all in your little thing. See how it's hardening up already? And you want it to go straight to the bottom and fill it up. that settle for a little bit and it should go down a little bit more and then we can top it off with a little bit more wax. See how full it is right now. Uh, we're going to let it sit at least six hours. Overnight is best but we're going to let it sit about six hours and let it just totally solidify. Okay so it's been sitting for a while and now it's ready to light. I'm going to show you the clock on when I started and we're going to try to let it burn through and just show you how long these things burn through. It is 10.21 p.m. Now I'm going to go ahead and light it. Now it's going to take just a little bit to, to get it to burn well so that you got a good flame going on there. But if you just needed some light, this is perfect right here. And we'll turn off the light. And you got yourself a little candle. 
Now when this starts burning pretty good, you can actually make a stove out of it with a larger can. Larger can, poke holes in it, put it over the top of that, I got some water here, and set it on top. It is 1034, and we're going to see how long it takes for that water to boil. It's 1040. See, it's starting to get a good bubble there. And we'll see how long it takes for a good bit. Now it is 1043, and I want you to see that. You can tell it's hot and see how it's boiling. That's awesome. Because if you're out camping or stuck out somewhere and you need to heat something up just so you can eat to survive, this is perfect. See how high the flame is now? This could put off a lot of heat if you needed to stay warm. Okay, I let this thing burn almost two hours. I boiled some water on top of it and it was still going strong, but I just don't have time to wait around to see how long it will go and you know, it's something you need to watch because it's flame, it's, it's fire. Some more wax, pour on top of this and you've got another candle. And when you're cooking on top of this thing, you might want to use a pan that you don't mind getting this on. This is from the flame. It's soot. It does come off of your pan, but not without a price to your cleaning items. And all you have to do to take it with you, to put it in your backpack, or your car, or your bug out bag, is just put it in a grocery bag, and then you're going to put everything within each other. So you're going to take your can, pop it down in there, Put it all in there. And we're just going to put it in the bottom of our grocery bag. Line it up. Ready to go.